Reading another person's moods is a basic social skill. We may find some clues in their face, but often we need to pay attention to tone of voice, posture, and even odor to figure out how another person is feeling. Here's how our brain combines information from many different senses to solve the puzzle of mood. Our first stop is the fusiform face area. This brain region, about the size of a blueberry, is built to detect faces. It helps us recognize our friends and read their expressions. The amygdala is a hub for emotions. It chats with the fusiform face area and gives us a sense of the mood displayed on a person's face. But facial expressions can be ambiguous or even lead us astray. We need other brain areas that combine different cues to get a good sense of what someone is feeling. The insula registers disgust, a feeling difficult to detect in the human face. Bad smells can heighten activity here, making disgust easier to recognize. The prefrontal cortex helps to construct abstract thought. It also combines sight, sound, and other sensory information, helping to create a context for social cues. The medial prefrontal cortex helps us to understand another person's intentions. We now know that it combines information from the face, body, and voice to represent mood. The superior temporal sulcus helps us perceive motion in living things. It also tells us the direction someone is looking. This region is like a switchboard. It gathers information from the senses to help us interpret emotions. The primary visual cortex captures data about the orientation, shape, and color of objects. It sends this visual data to the prefrontal cortex, where it mixes with other important sensory cues. The auditory cortex handles basic sound information like pitch and volume. It also responds to things we see, like moving lips. This shows that interaction between the senses can occur in basic sensory areas. To learn more about how we sense the emotions of others, see the March 2012 Scientific American Mind.